How's how are you? Good. How are you? Okay, thank God. What's new? Not much. <laughs> Am I the only one in class today? How's how's things in Florida? It's really cold. Very cold. <laughs> well, you should come over here. You'll see what's really cold. Well, I think over there is expected. You know. Yeah. We we I think we got forty degree weather yesterday. Ah. So you know, from eighty to forty, ah, you get no, it no, gradually. Uh, no swimming pool. No swimming pools, huh? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Okay, I got it. All right. So let's get started. We have this big master bet yourself to do, and then we can move on from there. Hopefully, we can finish it someday. <laughs> Not a shame. One day, one day we'll finish. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now. So I'm just like reading. I have I have a marker here. So uh -huh. I don't I don't exactly remember. Mm -hmm. You know, if we were there or some so I'll just I'll read and you know I'll try to bring you in somewhere. Uh, no, I do have in my in my notes here yeah. that we were discussing um, you know, when to tie it and when not to tie it, right? The the seat seats and yes, if it's yes. you know the 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 issue with shutness and you know if it's shutness on the talit or it's shutness on the seat seat no well it looks like you're on the ball you looks like you're doing better than we are over here so. <laughs> yeah, i'm trying that's what i have in my okay. notes you know? so we'll get started and we'll see where, where we go right so you want me to see if i can find it for you okay so it says like this so much kata rabin so this whatever rabin wrote the tour dire rambam where's the rambam minhaga rosh and minhaga the rosh the Dibre Balai tool and uh, the words of Balai tool. Love me shum deika benayu pluktas. It's not because there's really machloket between them. That's what Maran says. Interesting, right? The Inyan Dina. In other words, halacha is the same for everybody. For all these Rishonim. Share a Rambam katab. Sheim Ratzal lichroch. So says the Rambam that if he wants to, <clears throat> to tie below uh, minyan chuliot without the number of windings. So he can do that if he wants. And he also says, right, we're not really particular about the, the, the number of windings that we do. One is enough. I'm sorry? One, one is enough, yeah. Exactly. So what is he really coming to teach you? The Rambam, the Rambam, the Rambam was, his custom was to be particular about that. In other words, he used to do anyway the, the proper number as it, it's written regarding tchelet, right? Uh, his, that's what he says, right? The minhag is to, to do like that. The Rosh, but the Rosh didn't really care at all. He didn't, he didn't bother with that. Uh, okay, very good. Hi, hi, come join us. Have a seat. Have a seat. <laughs> Do I know you? No, oh, come have a seat. Take a, take a chair. No, sir, well, five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Five minutes okay, you got it. So, uh, <laughs> you live in the area? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very good. Okay, so uh, as we said, right, that we have a piece of balai tool, so even though the words of the balai tool, ad o lo karach ba ela chulia echad, kishela bichlal dibe rambam. It's really the same as the Rambam that until that point. Same as the words of the Rambam. Him, uh, that what she wrote that the main mitzvah, uh, who midive balai tour, uh, this from the words of the balai tour, Mishum de Bael Mikhtav de Balim Elu, he wants to write these things, the Hila de Balat, the uh, beginning of his words. What the Rambam said, the in Karach Halaban im Rova Hutin. So he said, right, that uh, the Rambam, that if the al roba chutim, if he wound the white on most of the strings, right, or shelo karach, or did not, elachuliach, just one, whatever he does, right, 
הקשה אז כושר, כן כתב גם בתחילת, סנטינג אולסון יורד בתחילת, ואחי איתה והדיה בגימה, that's what it says בגימה, ויש פרק תחילת, it says בגימה just like that, הוא משמע דגדיל בענף באל ויקובה, so it implies from there that these things, the gedil and the anaf, which are the strings and the, and the windings, as we said, right, all these things, these are uh, um, obligatory, right? In other words, they, you know, they're crucial. Sheim kerecha kula ad shelo nishar ba anaf. So what does that mean? That if he wound all of it, can you imagine? All, he just uh, winds it like, makes it like a mummy, you know? <laughs> right? Until there's no strings whatsoever left over, it's all windings, you know? Uh, or let's say he just left all the just strings, no windings whatsoever. He didn't even do one, one winding, right? Uh, right, yes. Right. But there, in a case like that, it's going to be possible. So what does that mean? We need both, right? That's the whole thing. We need to have both the seat, the winding and the strings. The im lo can, if not so, so then why does it say that he wound most of it? Even if he did all of it. What's the significance if it says if he only did one winding, he says. What's the significance? Even if he didn't do any winding, it should be also good. So you see from there that there is a limit, you know? In other words, you can't just do whatever you feel like. There has to be some part wound and there has to be some part strings. I have a question now. What's the, what's the whole purpose of doing the strings? Like, what's the, what's the super law? What's the meaning of it? Like, uh, like uh, we, could, not, we could just put on whatever way we want, but like yeah. in specific order we put it like that. These are the instructions, you know, that we have from the Torah, you know? This ah, is the way, yeah, we're instructed, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. So, uh, you know, that's what we're learning about, right? We're trying to see what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the crucial element over here that has to be done in order that it should be kosher, you know? So, the hen my iria im lo karach ba ela chuli achad, and he goes on to say, uh, So he says, uh, these rabbis uh, argued regarding a case where he didn't leave any, um, any, 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 any strings at all. That we say in this, over here in this peck, right? These two rabbis were sitting down together. Uh, so one person passed by. So uh, he had a certain cloak, you know, some kind of a robe. And he had the windings. All, the whole tzitzit was like a mummy, you know, wound up. <laughs> no, no strings whatsoever, right? Uh, no, no, no strings. So Rav said, So he says, well, you know, he did a good job with the uh, right with the uh, with the windings, but there's no there's no uh, tzitzit. He, he said, this other rabbi he said, no, they're both good. So what does that mean? What's the, there's a machloket here? They have an argument. They might come for the So Gemara asks, so what's the machloket? So he holds uh, this rabbi that says Gedil in the Pasuk, right? Kutil Petil, also says, says Petil. Or Gedil or Petil. In other words, you can do one or the other. It can be all strings or, or all windings, according to this opinion. You understand? The rabbi says, no, you need a little bit of both. Right? But that, when it says Gedil, it's coming just for the number. Gedil Shnaim Gedilim Arba. So it's one of the telling you that you need four, right? Uh, as we already mentioned before. Asa Gedil Upotal Upatlehu Mitocho. So if he made the uh, strings and the. Yeah. So he made the strings and he winds it around from the inside. In other words, he inserts it into the hole. Katum Nimuk Yosef, Meshem Rashi. So he's trying to say, right, that on the bottom it has to be some strings there. The end should not be uh, should not be winding. Right? There has to be the bottom has to be strings. It has to end up that way.
ושעושה גדול בסוף החזירים, והתוספות כתבו שם, סוסס תוספות, אומר, זה בסיפי, אין סיפי, זה מדרש, דרש, דרשנס, ועשו להם ציצית, שמיקס פעם ציצית, שומע אני יעשה כולם גדילים. So from there I see, right, you can make all of them like just uh, strings. תעמוד לומר הציצית, הקץ על הרסו, כדי שהגדיל יוצא מן הכנף, וציצית מן הגדיל, והא בריית הקשי על דרבה בבא חנא עד כאן. So what is it coming to tell you, right? That just teaching in the Sifri is coming to tell you that you need both, and therefore it comes out to be difficult by right, arguing on one of these opinions that we just mentioned, which says you can have one or the other. You don't really need both. Okay, עד כאן. כתב המורכי, יוסף זה מורכי, בשם רבנו שמשון, מי רבנו שמשון? גבי כיוון דאיש תראה לאילה איש תראה לכולה. So he says that uh, regarding over there, he writes uh, in the name of Rabbi Shimshon, the Kedivre Rav Ikar. So he says Rav is the halacha, as we thought, right? You have to have both. That's the halacha. Ve'ar ma'ed yaminan ve'rav le'olam p'til ba'inan. And that which we said, that according to Rav, you need p'til, katab p'erosh Rashi, it says, Rashi explains, yachi p'erosh, this way you have to explain it. Le'olam p'til nami ba'inan. We need both. One and the other, p'til and g'dil. Okay. Ve'ela de'abayinan p'til ve'g'dil ve'obachad lo mitkashar. So he concludes, right, in halacha, that you need both. And otherwise, it's not kosher. Ve'achi abdinan, this is what we do, he says, that's how we, the minhag is. Hashtag, ve'achi tana b'sifri p'rashat shalach l'cha. That's the way it's also taught in the sifri, as we mentioned. So, two places it's taught, right, this thing. Ve'katuv nimuk yosef, says nimuk yosef. Ahad de'aminan de'afilu lo kalach ba'ela chulia chad. That which we said, that uh, if you only did just one winding, right? We saw it's kosher, kshera. Da'inu, dafka kshera se kesher echad lachulia kedino. So you have to do also, as we said, right? One knot as well with that. One winding is not going to be good enough. It has to be also one knot. Dechulia uh, below kesher, eno mitkayim. Why? Because, why is that? Because winding without having a knot is not going to last. It's going to come apart. It's going to unravel. So therefore you don't have really any good deal. You don't have any winding. And now, now what he said, that uh, the, the proper way to do the mitzvah is to do, to wind around until there should be, right, uh, that with the knot and one winding should be at least this big. Right from the half of the thumb, right from the nail to the first joint. The old yesh, I mean, hagot achelot. So he says there's also other customs. That's it. Different ways. You know, you probably, by the way, if you if you've ever like you know looked around, there's a lot of different customs about how to do tzitzit. There's also the temani custom. You know, the Yemenite. Some people do like the Rambam also. You know, there are all kinds of things going around. Uh, I don't know exactly why they do that. Because the you know the the Tamanim used to go like the Rambam. You know this was their Rebbe. You know like uh, yeah. So okay, whatever. Ketav Rashi Shema Shianu Osim Chamisha Kshani Mishum Deshkura. I'm sorry, I cut you. But why would we follow the Rambam first? Is the Rambam on more logic? Based on logic. So uh, so uh, the truth is, you know that there's a system in the Bet Yosef like this. You know that we go point to majority. You know Rambam Rosh Rosh. Two out of three, right? Yeah, 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 that's the way to do it, yeah. Because, you know, it's a matter of majority, you know, like, whatever, you know, majority is always a strong factor in Torah. But let me get yeah. straight. Uh, but Zim Rambam said, I just want to make sure so, I'll, you know, so I have a logic I can see myself. So Zim Rambam said, from Moses to Moses, there was no very, so. Right, that's true, true. You know, it says in the, the truth is, Maram Bet Yosef himself says in Avkat Rochel, his book Avkat Rochel, which is Siman Lamed Bet, over there he says that Rambam Gdola Poskim, he was the biggest of the Poskim. You know, so then what's the story? The story is that nevertheless, you know, even though somebody may be bigger than you, you know, but there's also concept of majority, you know, and that sometimes overrides the greatness of one rabbi. But, but you I'm know, sorry. Uh, I'm you sorry. understand what I'm saying? I'm sorry. And this, by the way, was also what happened with the in the Talmud times of Talmud times of Mishnah. There was Rabbi Eliezer, you know, who was bigger than all of them, but they argued with him, you know, so they didn't accept what he said, and uh, so he lost the vote, you know, and he became a. He became a sore, a sore loser, you know, because of that, he got excommunicated, that was all story. Oh. 
You ever hear about this story before? Yeah, I heard it's all story, you know. Like, yeah, he so eighteen white beards, yeah, is that wrong? So he was uh no, not that guy, a different guy. So where was that's Arabi Al Azhar bin Azhar? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Gadol. We're talking about Rabbi Azhar Gadol. So what happened was that he was bigger than all of them, you know. But so being bigger doesn't always, you know, mean that the Hawk is gonna be like you. But isn't the there's also concept of majority? But yeah, concept of majority, you know? but isn't that what is right is right? Right, but the, the right goes according to the majority. That's the whole thing, you know? The majority, yeah, the majority makes... could be wrong and there could be a Ah, good. good. That's good. So, yeah, right. That's that's the whole point, right? That what you're saying is very strong, right? The majority could be wrong. Yeah, they you could know? off the cliff. <laughs> but Hashem says, you know what? Even though they're wrong, I accept their, I accept their vote. The vote is accept. You know what I mean? But so, Hashem way. accepts it because of, because of the concept of majority. So, majority is able to overcome even, uh, even a handicap like that. But that, that, yeah. but that concept could be. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm going to philosophy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because no longer there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, but wait, uh, but it, it sounds like the way I understand it, yeah. it's whatever your heart says that way. But that's not right, though. I'm sorry, what was that again? The way I understand it, it's like it's whatever your heart says. No, it's not a matter of heart. It's a matter of, you know, sources, knowledge, you know. Of course, yeah. Uh, deduction, you know, thinking proper, thinking proper. That's the that proper would, methodology, you know. All so that logically, stuff. say a lot of these things yeah. will change when Mashiach comes in. Oh, uh, well, I mean, you know, the truth is that it says in the Gemara Brachot that uh, when Mashiach comes, you know, eventually the whole Torah will be abolished. You know, the whole the whole oh. halacha will system, system of halacha will be abolished. Ah, yeah, halacha. Just like Adam Rishon did. Did Adam Rishon have Shulchan No. No, so we're not gonna have it either. You know what I mean, uh, that's the whole thing. But he's gonna. Rewrite. He had only one halacha in the Shulchan Aruch, Adam Rishon. You know. That's all he had. No, the, not to touch that food. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's the whole thing, you know. So, <laughs> but the, what, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to hop forward. My yeah. father will be like, "What are you talking about?" But the, uh, so, the, if Shulchan will I mean, all that, he'll probably rewrite the new version. Of the... No, there's no new version. You don't need it to, because the whole point of the halachot is to help us with this kind of world that we live in now. You know, but in Olam Abba, we're not going to leave the halachot anymore. There's no, no purpose for that anymore. The whole purpose of the halachot is to stay away from the from the Yitzhara, from the Satan. Then the Satan won't exist anymore, so there's no point. You know? There's no point. <laughs> makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, makes sense. Some people get shocked by this, by the way, you know, when I tell them this, you know, like, what? What are you talking? But I, I thought, you know, like, you know, ah, I was looking forward to that, you know, I'm going to keep all the halakhot at that time. Oh, too bad. Well, you know, it's going to be too late then. Well, it sounds like you, know, you better keep it now. <laughs> it sounds logical because there'll be a lot of knowledge. People will know the concept why they're doing some stuff. Yeah, so you know that's the way it is. I mean, uh, like you know. for example, back in the days, people didn't know why they washed their hands. Now it makes sense. You kill bacteria. But you know, uh, yeah, I, I see what you mean. But anyway, like what I want to say is that um, the Zohar Kadosh says the reason why we keep halacha is because in this world, you know, since Chet Adam Marishon, when Adam Marishon sinned, if you don't keep it, you fall into the klipot. That's what happens. You know, oh, yeah, you fall into the klipot. So the, the halacha prevents you from getting into the klipot. Once Mashiach comes, there won't be any clipboard. There's all that still be will be abolished. You know what I mean? But finished, right? All that stuff. But I read that. Uh, I read that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I read that. What you call? I read that uh, the world will be tomorrow, but the Jewish nation will rise. Eventually, it's, there's going to be no tomorrow whatsoever. It's but the goyim, all... they're going to go down though, because so is going to go down. Yeah, but you know. Down means destruction. That's what it means. It doesn't mean some kind of a lowly existence. That's not what it means. Well, they're not, they're not going to be educated. Like they're they're going to be destroyed. That's what it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So going to go down. Uh, yeah. Down is really down. When you when you say down, it really means down. Like America's going to be like America. The ideology yeah. is going really yeah, it's, it's, it's going to cease to like, exist. That's what it means. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Their idea is going to take them to become extinct, you know? Extinct. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so, what I mean by it. I'm trying to say it nicely. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, let's go on. So it's, it's, it's like this, right? Uh, Rashi says, So it says, Why do we make five knots, Tafka? You know, Tzitzit, right? Now, the whole thing, right? Why do we do five knots? As we said, right, only the first nine is from the Torah. We mentioned that already, right? Only the first one. The rest are the Rabbanan. But why do we do five? Wait. So it says, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What do you mean? It has a lot of knots. It has, yeah, knots. We do five, no, the, not windings, knots, the, the double knots that we do, right? Uh, There's windings of double knots. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, we have five of them, five double knots. That's what we have, right? So um, why is that? So it says, 
because tzitzit is weighed against all the mitzvot, right? The mitzvot tzitzit. It's a very important, so very, very crucial. It's weighed against all the mitzvot. Kloma, the tzitzit ole taf resh. So it says the word tzitzit goes, the, the numerical value is 600, right? Uh, it's known, right? This, this, uh, this drash, you know? The ushmonach team eight strings. This comes what, 608, right? Yeah. The shaim five knots, 613, right? The magic number, right? That's where you know. You ever hear this before, right? Yeah, it's, five, it's known, it's known. Okay. Yeah, it's true, but what does that have to do with tzitzit, right? Anyway, right, the point is like this. So, that's 613. So, that's how Rebbe Nutam used to do. Right? So, he used to do five knots, Rebbe Nutam. Just like we do, right? What does that mean? There's two next to talit, one double knot, which is and then, uh, I'm sorry, not, I didn't mean to say it, I said it wrong way. Two are close to the baguette, two, two double knots, and three of them are more, you know, under, right? Underwards, under whatever. So it says, why is that? Because we go up in holiness and not go down. Uh, what does that mean? He would tie next to the corner, right, the, the wing, whatever. One, he would do one knot over there, right under the digit. Right? And then uh, then we'd do some windings a little bit. And then do another knot, right, the second one. And then he would do lots of windings, right, uh, interesting. In the end, he would do three knots in the end. Right, because the knots are holier. And between the um, each knot would be some very little winding, not much. Not exactly the way we do today, but whatever. So he so says the truth is, but we don't find any support in the Talmud for five having five knots. So where does this come from, right? That which it says, right, you have to tie, you have to make a knot for each winding. That means one white, and one tchelet, that's already two. And since we now don't do less than seven on the first one, the first series of windings, therefore we do five knots, next to talit, then we do tchelet, right? If we, not, we don't have tchelet today, but if we had it, that's how we would do it. The echad shel lavan, one of white, kesher, right? Echad, the achar kach shtei chuliot, and then two more windings. Hat shem esayim shesh chuliot. So altogether, you're gonna have six uh, windings. Hare arba ak sharim and four knots. Rechak kach osir chulia shebiit. Then you do a seventh uh, knot, a seventh winding. Shel lavan of white. Rechak kach kesher echad, and then you do one knot. So altogether, we have five knots, right? Uh, not exactly the way we do today, right? Not at all. Even Habib, Zal Kata Beshemaitu, he writes this rabbi, Shata min hagenu the Hamishak Sharim. So he says the reason that we do five knots, Mipnesh Bezman at Chelet, because when we had Chelet, Hayu Osim Sheva Chuliot, the first one will be seven, right? The windings. Shalosh Krichot, Bechol Chulia. So what does that mean? Oh, no, not, not exactly, right? Altogether, there was three in each one, three windings in each one. The The first one will be only white. And also the last ones. And each winding had its own kesher, its own knot. So altogether, there will be like five knots. Why is that? Because when you have seven windings, you have eight knots, echad betchila, echad besof, one in the beginning, one in the end, the shisha bemsan, six in the middle, the chemat de chuliot alavan ayu, arba, and since there was four white um, windings, im ken hayu kshishahem chamisha. So altogether, the knots were five, the whole zek kepi mashi ayu, nagim likshor achar kol chulia miasheba. So that's according to the old custom like this, you know? Yeah, yeah. And 
because he says if you, when you do it with tchilat, that's the way it comes out. In other words, the the, the the system comes out that way. You know, that's the way that's what he's saying. Can't you just do the white ends of hell together, just one winding, and you're done? There's a there's a like it's a very specific system. You know what they have. You know the to do. You know like you know what I mean. So we don't do it this way today. But when you do it that way, it had to be five. That's the way it came out. You know. But today it doesn't have to be five. You know. Uh, but we do it as a remembrance for the, the from there. It's a zecher, you know. Like, uh, yeah. But where where are they getting it? And what's the proof? Why? Is there like is there ways to support? Because this is the way that it had to be done with chelit. This is, you know this is the system. You know what I mean? Right. So the white was because you white has more kedusha and it, it don't go down with kedusha. So the whites, like we said before, it had to end with two whites. Yeah, something like that. That's what we said. Yeah, that's what we said last time. Yeah, before beforehand. Uh, let's go on, right? So you know, the truth is, you know that here it's not describing this whole thing. You know that you're asking about. It's just a very specific kind of thing, you know. But in Ken Hayu Kishem Hamisha, the whole Ze Kefi Masha Yu Nohagim Dikcho Acha Chol Chulia Neasheva Aba Minat Torah. But but he says that's how that was a minhag like that to do. You know, like each. Uh, they would tie after each winding, right? About Minat Torah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, don't the spy do that? They do the step thing. Ah, uh, no, this is something that. Ah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, that's something else. That's, yeah, that's a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit different. Which where do you come from, by the way? What's your background? <laughs> Sfari? Yeah, yeah. From where? Uh, Tajikistan. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so you live here in the neighborhood, right? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Where do you pray? Everywhere, yeah. Everywhere, okay. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like all of us, we go around, we go around, yeah. we're, looking for, <laughs> we're looking for something. Wonder. Since I'm we're we're looking wondering. for something we can't find, it seems like. I'm also wondering, I'm also wondering. We're wondering, wondering Jews, yeah, yeah, wondering Jews. It's true. Okay, unfortunately, you know, that's, that's where we are today. I'm waiting for my check on them, I settle down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we got some problems. Okay, so. <laughs> that's my okay. problem. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I can tell you, you know, Tuesday, there right? was only one time in my life yeah. that I wanted to go only to one shul. Right. You know when that was? When I was with Manan. When I was with Manan, oh, wow. you know, I was his neighbor over there. I always wanted to pray with him. I didn't want to pray anywhere else. You know, that's. So you know, like when you when you find the right place, you really just want to stay there. You know? <laughs> That's the way it is, you know. The reason why we don't stay in one place, you know why? Because we don't like any of them. That's what it is. You know, it gets bored, we can't though. find a good, um, you know, that proper uh, disposition, you know, that proper connection. We can't get it. That's why we're we're we're, we're confused and we're uh, frustrated. You know, that's why we we, we go around like that. You know, this Russia, is the reason, you know. In Russia, we had one bed Knesset, then everybody went. But, but over there, know. you know, in Yerushalayim, in Maran's bed, bed Knesset, people were pushing to get in there, you know, like you couldn't get in. It was it was crowded. There was no room to come in sometimes. You know what I mean? It was people were dying to get in there. You could see, you know, like and uh, it was all of us. Like we were just, you we were crazy, you know. Like you, it was like you know, you the person goes mad, you know, to get into a shul. You know, you ever see something like that, right? It doesn't exist, right? But over there, I'm telling you, we were mad. But like you, we were, we wanted to get in there so badly. You know, like we could, we couldn't help. We, could, we were pushing each other. You know. What? what okay. <laughs> yeah, Maran was the was the shul. Well, was Maran shul. So that's the yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, So that's what it was. You know. I remember the first time that he opened the shul, the rabbi. You know, uh, this was like, I don't know, fifteen years ago that he opened the shul. You know, it was towards the end of his life. Before that, he was praying in Yehavadat in the kolo that we were learning. But he, when he opened the shul, they opened on high holy days, you know, like Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. This was the opening, you know. So the gabbai, you know, the shul came to me and he told me, he says, uh, he says, uh, you know, the rabbi wants to invite you to come okay. for the high holy days, you know, to pray with us. So I was like, what, me? Who, me? Well, wait, yeah. you sure you got the right guy? I was like, maybe you're talking about somebody behind me over there? <laughs> so, so he told me, no, no, he says, he wants you to come to the rabbi. He says, he wants you to be in the rabbi section. He says he wants you to put you over there, you know, with the rabbis. You know, this. I was like, oh me? You you serious? It's like <laughs> I was in shock. You know, the first the, the time that he opened, he invited me to come in there. Oh Hashem, I had the zechut to be there. You know, it was beautiful. It was wonderful. 
And since then, you know, like I never left the place, you know, like since the, when the rabbi was there, I was always coming in there. I remember, you know, I used to come in there even, even if I would pray, like, you know, he didn't pray the nets, he prayed at seven o'clock, you know. Uh, but if I would go to nets, you know, which was a little bit earlier, like 6.30, 6, whatever, you know, I would, afterwards, I would just go in there, you know, just to, you know, to get in there, to see what's going on. Like, you know, I was so, <laughs> okay, so that's the way it was, you know, I can't tell you. Uh, yeah, we, we, we love that place. It was, it was incredible. It was incredible. Uh, that, so let's go on. So it says, right, that, um, it's just from the Torah, as we said, right? You only need one kesher, basically, going to the Torah. You don't need five, right? It's just a minhag, what we do today. So we're saying. So we're saying. We're saying. Ah, so he says, uh, this is the third winding. They were putting putting it inside the the uh, the knots, right? Uh, so he says, therefore, um, right? So it says in our times, it's like we do that with all the windings. So that's the Friday custom that we just mentioned. Yeah, that's what he's mentioning right now. Okay, so in other words, each time, like you know, you put it in, you wrap it. You, it's always wrapped. It's being wrapped all the time, so it doesn't it's come like apart. A step or something right. Like that. It's like you go around it. You know, it's yeah. like a wrap. So uh, that's what we do. That's what the Sephardim do today. You know, not everybody does that, but a lot of the Sephardim do it. Okay, whatever. So anyway, right? Uh, so that would tie the chelat. So you didn't really need, uh, you know, five knots, because that system was tying everything. The way they were doing it like that, you know, that's the whole thing. Very interesting. Uh, but he says the custom is that they do knots in in the middle of all the series of uh, right windings, like we do today. No, that's what he's saying, right? Uh, the RP or Tom in Hag, so it's going to the Minhag. I know Osim Hayon, that's how we do say Hamishak Sharim. So this Posek, this Vishon is saying, right, that that's where the whole thing is a Minhag, what we do today. Yeah. So that's very interesting, right? So, by the way, you see from there that if a person really has, uh, let's say, you know, double knot, and then he has one winding, right? And he closes it up, you know, and he has to see it's kosher according to the Torah that 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 that, that tzitzit. So what does that mean? That uh, yeah, you see what I mean? And that's like yeah, it's kosher. It says that in the Torah one nod and uh, that's it's allowed, or you just that's like right. Uh, that's what that. That's what that's what we have. Torah. Yeah. So um, because it says yeah. that uh, but that's but, you, that, but then also you need the strings to go down. That's something else, right? There's two different things. Yeah. We need we have two parts, right? We have the knot and the winding, and then we have the strings. Yeah. If you've got that, you're good. It's like Tiffany, how it doesn't matter how you put her on as long as you put her on here. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, you have to do it the right way with Tiffany, right? There's a whole discussion about that, but we're not going to get that. Some people do, yeah. Some people do just wrap around. Yes, yes. As long as that thing doesn't move here. There's a right way and there's a wrong way, by the way. You know, I don't want to get into it now, this whole thing, but. Oh, really? Yeah, some people do it the wrong way. Yeah. Right. According, to, according to some post team. Yeah. After this point, all this wrapping was from the front, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, you know, it's like um, some do seven, some do eight. You know, uh, but, according to Kabbalah, it's supposed to be like eight because you need seven complete ones. Right. Um, yeah. The reason I'm asking is I heard that once you do this part and you put on the head, you're allowed to say amen, uh, enter amen, and uh, ah, 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 oh, okay. And we have to we have to look into that because the truth is, you know, the Rambam says that you really shouldn't talk until you did you do this. He says, this is crucial. He says that the mitzvah should, the bracha should cover this too. Oh, really? Two and one over here. So maybe not so, right? So what you're saying. But what you're saying is that here, right, it's not crucial. It's true. 
but this is this is important. This is important. Right, that's the thing. You know? Yeah, no, it's not really. It's, it seems to be that's more more important. So we're gonna get into that position. You know, I don't want to tell you now some uh, half you know half baked uh, you know ideas. <laughs> when we get there, we'll, we'll get into it. I'm just telling you from my memory. You know what I remember. Okay, so let's go on, right? Uh, the So the Rosh says like this, right? It says, now the Minhag is to do four air spaces, which are between the five knots, meaning what the windings, right? So he says, each one is equal, he says. Uh, and each one has to be at least, we said this much, right? This, this, this size, each one. We won't know yet. So it says, what's the, what's the point of that, right? So it says it's for it's for aesthetics, aesthetically pleasing, whatever, right? Pleasant. And also it says this way it lasts. You know, you have it this way. It's a strong, you know, it's a strong, um, it's a strong system there. You know, that's the whole thing. Uh, okay. Uh, and then we do right. Uh, Eight strings, right? Four here, four here on each side. They will say a kesher. They do the first, the uh, right, the first, uh, the first knot. I can know that's where it ends the rosh. When you really the mishum the minhag harabenu tam. So it seems to me that because of the minhag harabenu tam, shiavir shavin akshanim, that the airspace you have between the knots, I know shavir, it's not equal, right? As we said, rabenu tam did it like uneven, right? That we just we mentioned that before, right? I know now here to see. So therefore, right, it's not really, doesn't look nice like that. So the Rosh says, you know, doesn't want to do it this way mm -hmm. because it doesn't look nice. It's not even. Interesting, you know? Uh, so we don't have symmetry, you know? That's the problem. Can you cut it though? Like, huh? this, sounds, this sounds dumb, but can yeah. you cut it? Make it even? Yeah, as we said, right, you're allowed to cut the tzitzit. There's no problem, but... Uh, even when you tie it up, everything's done. You just want to, like, yeah, you like, can cut it, but according to, to Kabbalah, it. you're supposed to not use metal, right? Don't use metal uh, scissors. Uh, you have to use something like not metal. You know? Use gold. <laughs> ah, gold. <laughs> gold is also metal. Uh, gold is metal? Uh, yeah, of course. Oh, wow. Yeah. But in the temple, Precious metal. But in the temple times, God allowed us to use gold as a tool. Oh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Not, not really as tools. They were using it for decoration. Yeah. So yeah. they were not allowed That's to use metal. Else. They were allowed to use that. That's something else. That's something else. That's something so, else. yeah, because it's decorative purposes. But anyway, right? Uh, Right, so it says, So he says also there's another problem that the uh, the winding that you have between the second and third doesn't is not going to last the way Rabbi Nathan said. Why there's too many of them? Point to Rabbi Nathan, right? He did like a, a huge amount. The windings there, uh, right? Shehu meru be kamar arosh. Therefore, the Rosh said the minhag is there. Adif minhag rabbeinu tam. So he says. Therefore, he says my minhag. The Rosh says is better than rabbeinu tam's minhag. Right? That's what he's trying to say, right? Because you know I have it even Stephen. I have the aesthetics. Right? It lasts, right? It's practical. Blah blah blah. Right? All the good things in life. Right? All right. Uh, okay. Good. If uh, nesha minhag is there, I don't know it's tzitzit. The asulit came. So he says. Therefore, right? Better to do it my way. He says. As we said, right? Aesthetics, it's gonna last. Minhag ze katu gamken besamag. It's also written in the smag, begam rabin we ham. Also rabin ham, kata besiem be, u baavir shabin kesha le kesha, or sim krikhol ptano. So it says between the airspace, between the airspace, between the knots, we do windings, you know, a little bit, right? Little, little light windings. Ken a chuliot, like, 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 uh, chuliot, right? Which are like vertebra. Kol echad lefi minhago, different customs, he says, right? Regarding that. What numbers you do and all these things, right? Different customs, really. Uh, I've seen several different ways of doing these things. People have shown me in Jerusalem, you know, in Israel. I've seen a lot of interesting stuff. What do you uh, mean? I'm sorry. What do you mean? Like the way they tie it? Different customs, you know. Different, yeah. The way they do it. Rambam, this Tenani, Yemenite, blah blah blah. This, One question. Uh, I'm sorry. The blue, the yeah. blue color. Yeah. The red. We know that it was made up from the sea shells. So we have mollusk, right? Mollusk, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but they don't know exactly how to do it right now. Yeah, these are fake today. The funds are worth Don't yeah. waste your money with them. Uh, don't waste your time and don't waste your money. 
All fake. Fake news. Yeah. 100%. Right. There are some foolish people, you know, who have bought this idea, you know, some fools. Oh. Well, yeah. it, it does sound like foolish, but because... You know what the man used to say, the Vavavavad used to say, you know, there was, there's a Pasuk of Mishle. You know what it says, right? Peti Amin Nechol Davar. You know what it means, uh, Mishle? It's a Pasuk. The fool believes in everything, you know? Everything he sees, ah, oh, wow, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a foolish person, foolish-hearted person, you know? You can, you can fool him with anything, you know? You can trick him, you know? You can... You can sell him the Brooklyn Bridge, you'll buy it, you know? Yeah, okay, give me, okay, okay. It's my bridge. Uh. <laughs> Some people, could, well, the logic behind that, that could be because a lot of people have fear of Hashem, too, so they're falling. Yeah, yeah. The, the problem is that they have some schools will stay. Okay. No, yeah, I understand. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, so let's go on. So he says, uh, the person gets ahead of himself, you know what I mean? Get ahead of yourself. Get a little bit lost, you know, excited, get excited. <laughs> oh. You know, there's a story like this, but then I'll tell you a funny story, by the way. You know, this was I was told when I was a kid that they say that the Gaum of Yuna, you know, he was like the father of the yeshiva movement that they have in the Ashkenazi world today, yeah. you know, the yeshiva at brisk, you know, all these yeshiva that they have. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, like they come from the they come from the Tradition is of the Gra in a sense, you know what I'm saying? That there's it's their forefather or whatever, you know, their godfather, whatever you want to call it, right? So they say, by the way, the Gra himself, by the way, didn't open any yeshivot. He wasn't a chief rabbi. He was, you know, he wasn't Dayan. You know, he just sat in his house and learned all day. That's all he did, you know, with tefillin on. You know, he had tefillin. You know, if you see a picture of him, right? You see his tefillin is there. You know, <laughs> he's just sitting there learning all day. No, no job, no, no, no position, no, no, no educational system, no nothing. He didn't build nothing, you know? So what happened was that he was, that's all he did all his life. He just sat and learned all day, you know? So what happened was that uh, they say that one day, some of his Talmudim, you know, came to him. They told him, they said, Rebbe, you know, and they said, uh, you know, uh, we want to open some yeshivot, you know? What do you say, you know? Should we do it? You know, start educational system, you know? Yeah. So he told them, he says, no, no, I said, don't do it. So, so they left, you know? They, they, they said, okay, fine, you know, they left. So, you know, they, so he rejected that, you know, why not? Good question, right? So they say, you know, like a few years later, they came back again, you know, <laughs> they asked again, they said, Rebbe, you know, we want to open some yeshivot. What do you say now? Should we open? So we told them, okay, if you want to do it now, says, you can do it. No problem. <laughs> They're ready. <laughs> they weren't ready. So, <laughs> so they asked him, you know, the same question, you know, they said, he says, but Rebbe, we came to you a few years ago, you know, so it was not to do it. So what happened now? What changed all of a sudden? Some you know, people couldn't use what changed, you know? You know what he told them? He told them, he says, the first time you came, he says, I saw you were very excited, you know, like, you know, like a, a fool, you know, like, you know, uh, getting excited. <laughs> so he says, I knew it wasn't the right time because you were like, you were, you were foolhardy, you know, <laughs> foolhardy, you know, but he says, now you came seriously calmly, you know, you were all calm and, you know, collected, you know, he says, now I see you're serious, you know, you're not just doing it out of excitement. You know, you're scared. really serious about it. Because now many good go. Maybe they were scared that you're gonna say no again. That's what I want to <laughs> See the, the rabbis, you know, they, they get into these little things, you know, they, they they read you, you know, they read you how you behave. They see what you what you are, yeah, you know, where you're coming from, you know. <laughs> the white stockings and the what the white stockings? Yeah. What about the white stockings? So you could, uh, no, they don't wear stockings. I know these are baseball players, you know, White Sox, Red Sox. Yeah. Sure <laughs> <laughs> that is true, actually. That is true. <laughs> That's how city gets. Yeah, there are a lot of people like that, you know. I mean, you know, Hasidic, Hasidic world. Yeah, there are a lot of people. Hasidic, they wear this. Wear stuff. white socks, you know. But is that also? Uh, what's with the Okay, let's not get into that now. We're not going to get into that clothing. That's a different discussion, by the way. Clothing. Why they do that? That's whatever, a city, but isn't it? We're getting off the topic, you know. So that's a city, though. But yeah, of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. But anyway, right? You, you get the idea, right? When, when a person gets too excited, you know, like that means he's like, acting like a fool, you know? Just relax, you know, like stay calm, you know? What, what are you going to get excited about? You know? That means, that, so you know why? So he, he told them that when I when you get excited, says, I see Yetzirah is inside of you. Yeah. You know, that's the thing, you know? That's true. You're too excited. You, when your person is, is not, he has Yetzir Hatov, he's not, you know, he's not shaking and quaking, you know, not excited, just calm, you know, just relax. He's not angry. Yeah, yeah, he's calm, you know, collected, you know, like a wise man should be. You know, there's, there's a incredible, by the way, 
There's an incredible Gemara, you know, which says something unbelievable. It says, you know, that Rabbi Danasi, you know who he was, right? The okay. famous Rabbi Danasi, right? The great, one of the big, big, big Chachamim of the Talmud, of the Mishnah. He wrote the Mishnayot, right? So they say, you know, one day he said, they say, he laughed. So he says, it caused a great deal of disasters in the world, you know? Like, because he laughed? Yeah, yeah, because he laughed, you know? Can you imagine? So a person on that level, you know what I mean? Laughing is already like getting too excited, you know? Like, what's, what are you getting excited about? But, We're in Galut, you know? Like, what? What are you getting happy, so happy about? What's what's I, a, what happened to you? You know what? What are you laughing about? What's what's so funny? I want contradiction. You know, so, <laughs> I want contradiction. It says that the person should be happy, though. Right inside, you know, but doesn't have to show outside. That's the thing, you know. There's being simcha inside you. You should be sameach. And then it's also but outside, you know, like they say. By the way, Gaon Levinow says this. You know, uh -huh. I don't know if he gets it from his Gemara, but he says, you know, he says a big chacham, you know, shouldn't laugh. Uh -huh. It should be very serious, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, can you imagine? That's, uh, I feel depressed. <laughs> I feel depressed. Incredible, right? Incredible. But doesn't say yeah. the Moshiach is going to have happy face, though? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see when he comes with Hashem. We'll, <laughs> no, we'll let you know. No, that's what it says, right? Azi Malaschi Stok Pino. It says, right? In those days when Moshiach comes, then we'll be laughing because you're, then you're allowed to laugh. You know what I mean? In Olam Azeh, we're not allowed to laugh too much. Yeah. Not too much, you know what I mean? A little right. bit is okay, right. but not too much, you know? But it says but for, for, for Rabbi Udan Asi, even one laugh was too much. Ah, uh, because Can you imagine example on that level. People, uh, on that example. level, you know. He was example. People could say not like only example, but he was also the you know the leader, the you know the yeah, let's see. the epitome of the you know the the kedusha or whatever. Can you imagine? Okay, let's get back to what we said, right? The Gemara Rabbeinu Yerucham Katan will say the Embassy Avir Rosh Hashem Nidusha Yeshev Osim Kichol Ktanot. Right, so we said right. Uh, <laughs> so it says, <laughs> So he says, I have a, he says, I have a tradition, says Rabbi Nurham, so we do 13 corresponding to the Yugimel Midot, of mercies, 13 attributes of mercy. Right? By the way, that's what we do in the last one. The last one we do 13, the last one. Um, that's the third attribute of mercy. Is that is the Rambam what he writes in that one? Uh, no, you're talking about the principles of faith. That's something else. Uh, yeah. This is from the this is from the sages. This uh, not from the Ramcha. Do you remember one of them? What uh, regarding what the uh... the the or the 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 all these things, right? These so that's the 13 principle of our character. Oh, yeah. You give me a midot, we call that, right? That's the 13 principles, yeah? Of, of mercies, yes. Mm. Of mercies. There's also 13 principles of Rabishma, right? Derivation that we say in the Korbanot at the end, we say that's something else. That's okay, there's a lot of 13s in, in Judaism, a lot of 13s going on. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so so here he goes. Look what he says, right? He says, I saw what they do is the first one they do seven, which then the second one nine, which she then 13, 11, I'm sorry, then 13, um, 11, 11, and then 13. Right? This is what it says in the Shukhan, by the way. So it's like, like this. odd numbers. Right. Today, I believe we do seven, eight, and 11, and 13. Here it says nine, right? We do eight, according to Kabbalah. You know, we do eight instead of nine. But according to this, it's supposed to be nine, the second one. Why would they not use Kabbalah? Will they use a specific thing? They didn't. Uh, they, a lot of them, we showed them they never learned Kabbalah. They didn't know. You know, they, they were Pashtanim, you know? They just had Talmud. That's all they had. This is Pretty what, much, what generation? This is two, uh, we showed them the early authorities, you know, from the medieval, medieval era. Middle yeah, medieval era. You know, from 1000 until, you know, 1500, right? Around there. Like that's the medieval, medieval era. Okay, so, I uh, believe Right, so he says, so this is how we do it. He says, uh, so all together it's 40. This way, right? So, um, all right, so he says, it turns out to be 39, and then with the Shem, it turns out to be 40. Uh, so it seems to be the reason is because of the fee, the that which we learned in Brighta, you shouldn't be less than seven. 
ולא יוסיף על שלוש יוסף, don't do one thirteen, הכריכות שבין קשר לקשר, okay, it's going on between the knots, the windings. כפירוש אחרון שכתבו את הסוד, רק צאת את הסוד, כתבו נימוקי יוסף, צאת נימוקי יוסף, משום הכי מתחילים בשבע, so it says because of that we start with seven, זה הפוחת לא יפחות משבע, because why, you shouldn't do less than seven, ועולים והולכים, and then we go up from there, right, we go up not down, משום זה מעלים בקדוש ברוך הוא גומרים בשלוש עשרה, therefore we go up in the holiness, and we third, finish with thirteen as we said, right, שהיא תכלית העלייה, which is, he says, the biggest you can go, right? You can't go more than that. שאין מוסיפין עליהם, you can't do more than 13. We already mentioned that. כתב רבינו הגדול מריה אבוהב, says רב מריה אבוהב, says, right, ורם כתב בתשובה, so he says, רם said in תשובה, the קשרים לא מעכבה, so he says, קשרים are not מעכב, they're not, they don't hold you back, they're not critical, right? אלא לכתחילה, just לכתחילה. But in the end, it says that he has no penai, he doesn't have time, let's say, you know, to do a lot. But, you know, for instance, the first day, let's do it in Arab Shabbat, you know, he doesn't have time to finish it. So he can do like just a minimum, you know, and just leave it like that. You know, it would be like an example. We're going to Arab Shabbat, exactly what it says, right? It says Arab Shabbat. It's getting dark, you know, it's about Shkia now. It's getting dark already. You can't do any more. You've got to stop, you know. You've got to get into the shower already, right? There's no time for, no time for tzitzit. Right, the Kyotzev, no me'akvin, im hayu lo panai, but it's as if he does have time. Then, you know, Rasha lefchot, you shouldn't do less than that, right? In other words, two like the minhag, you know? What does that mean? Five knots, you know? And four in between, right? Windings. Four series of windings. And Rasha lefchot, me'im pechet over al dat chachamim. Look what it says, right? If he does less than that, you know, if he has time, he's transgressing the will of the sages, you know? In other words, because, you know, the minhag is like as we said, right? So you see from here, by the way, that, you know, um, if you read into this language here, you know, you see something, a couple of important points. Number one is, first of all, right, the rabbis never decreed to do all these things. These are like customs, you know, but nevertheless, it's called the will of the Chachamim. You know what I mean? Why is that? Because these customs are made by the Chachamim. You know what I mean? By the way, they say, the, the, right, this, the, the, the Rishonim, right. you know, the Rishonim, they say, by the way, that a valid custom is only one which is made by Chachamim. Uh, but a custom which was made by Amir Atzot is not a valid custom. You don't have to keep it. Ignorant people, you know? Uh, like, you know, these guys, you know? Like, you, know <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? These guys, uh, well, you know, these, uh, these guys who come to the shul, you know, eat semichka, you know? <laughs> you know, these kind of, kind of people, right? Gossiping, you know, gossiping, and this and that. Newspapers, right, exactly. The Bukharian Times. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not the New York Times, even worse, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, it does, it's even worse. worse. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> we have the soap on that. You don't need it, right? <laughs> 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 okay. We got everything there. <laughs> oh, God bless. <laughs> okay, <sorry. laughs> so. In our shine, it's called. Maybe we can over all that. Okay, very good. So let's go on. Okay, we have a little bit, five, five more minutes. So he says, Rabbeinu, so Meshkatav Rabbeinu, because Shosh did tell me. So Rabbeinu said also, right, you got to do a double knot, as we said, right? One knot is really not enough. That's what we do today, by the way, right? All double knots. Why is that? Because it holds it in place, you know, otherwise it's not going to hold, you know, it's just one knot, is just going to come apart. So it says, how oh, he wrote, this is about this, Maran says, Shekin Katavu, Tosfot, Tosfot also writes like this, to do double knots. The Rosh, also the Rosh, and Mordechi, Ismag, Shemichol Keshav, Koshir, Shnik Shain, you got to do double knot each one. Because one won't last, it will unravel. Therefore, it's not really called a Kesher. It's not called a knot at all. So he says, I wrote over there, how do you do it, right? All these things. Okay. Okay, so we're done with you bet, I think, right? That was you bet. It's huge, right? There may be a little bit more, actually. Because now we just got to you Gimel. Now you can, yeah, you can, now you can find it. Lucky you, right? You found it. You know. <laughs> Bet Yosef Yud Gimel. Let me just see if there's any more you bet afterwards in the end. Yeah, no, that's the dollars. Which book is this book? Is the Shulchan Aruch? It's everything. Two Bet Yosef Shulchan Aruch. The whole thing there. The whole program. Is this the Safra book? The one the Safra wrote? No, this is not Safra. This is a nice Israeli book. Uh, <laughs> nice Israeli. <laughs> Israeli. 
Yeah. No, because I see in Safra book, he has a one portion of Gemara, one portion of. Uh, oh, one that's portion. interesting. Yeah, he has a really good book. My friend is telling me he has Gemara. Uh, yes, uh, all the Pasukim, all of them, the Torah. And okay, so we'll do Shulchan Aruch, Yud Bet, and we'll, we'll, we'll stop there. Okay. I think that's where we are. How many, how many tomes do they have? How many, how many volumes, what? I'm sorry? How many volumes of... Uh, oh, this, in this format, you have like more than 20 probably. Oh, here it says, Aleph, Zoom, Mem, Chet. So that's, that's, that's the chapters. That's 45. Those are the chapters, yeah. Or Chaim. Wasn't yeah. it Or Chaim Big Rabbi also? Yeah, that's the, that's that's something else. We're not talking about that. That's a different rabbi, yeah. Yeah, different rabbi. Yeah. Uh, I was in his grave. Very popular. Every shul down there, he is orachai. Wow. <laughs> really? Every shul like in Israel, you see he's orachai. Sounds good. I don't know. I just like I noticed that like much like orachai. I read uh, some of his commentaries. It's very very deep. Who orachai? Never read his books. Yeah, very deep. Yeah, very deep. Really? Yes. What books did he write? What's the name of the book? It's, it's commentary. It's called the Orachim. Uh, 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 commentary on the Chumash. But there's also he has other books he wrote. Also, there's a book called Rishon Lezion. Does he have books he wrote. Have No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, so I don't have seen it. Sorry. So. Safari. Uh, Safari. Safari has it? Translation. Uh, but the whole Orachim they did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I, I there is there is a, a commentary on the Chumash. There is Orachim. They have the whole thing. Uh, I have the, I have one of them. I think I have very sheet. Interesting. Ah, oh, thank you. Okay. I'll check <clears throat> on Main Street. I'll know. check because because I did tell him the oh, spy. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, Williams, Williams, in addition. Yeah. What's what's your profession? What do you do? I'm a case manager. Case, case manager. Case. What, for what? For what? Uh... I help out people. Ah, interesting. For what? How do you help out? Oh, like certain people that like uh, they have disabilities. Yeah, like. Uh, uh-huh. So, uh, it's not like a social worker, right? Something else. Yeah, kind of social worker. Social worker. But with the company, I work with this company. Interesting. IDCC. Very nice, beautiful. How old are you? I'm um, 30. Married? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> right, we'll do the Shulchan Aruch. God bless you. So it says the Shulchan Aruch like this, right? Miyan Chutei Atzitzit Bechok Kanaf. So it says, uh, you got you back? You got <laughs> so it says the, 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 the number of strings of Tzitzit. In each corner, arbak fulim, four folded over, shem shemona, which comes becomes eight, right? You fold it over, comes eight. Ve'im hosiv, if you add pasul, right? We said some opinions allow you to add, right? Remember? Right, exactly. We said with chelat, without chelat, right? All kinds of opinions. But truth is, yeah. So this, it's good what you're saying. If we had chelat, we probably would allow another four. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But since we don't have, we so that's what we only only are. Four, which is four, double four, which is eight. Right? Okay, very good. So then he says, uh, So then what you do is you you cut the uh, heads of the strings, the four, and then you put them inside the hole, insert them. The az yechet is going to be eight. Okay, that's pretty much a story, right? So I guess we'll stop there. Maybe, maybe I already did this before, but anyway, we got some more things to do. Okay, next time, visit the Shem. You have class every every night. Visit the Shem. Every Sunday night. and Thursday. Sunday and Thursday. But this this Monday though. Sunday right. Thursday. Ah, Sunday. Th- <laughs> Sound like cheap. <laughs> Just like the way you work, you know, every day we work every day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They have also call uh, every night at the Gavriel. Okay, so thanks for joining us from Zoom. Uh, have a good Hello. night. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. See you tomorrow. God bless. Hashem. Oh, you were recorded. I was recorded? Yeah, you <laughs> Whatever you say can be used against you. <laughs> <laughs>